Mission Control, this is the International Space Station. Uh, we are detecting several objects with us here in Earth orbit. Wait, they're, they're coming into view now. It's, it's a yo-yo. And a top. Mission Control, they're toys! Uh, roger that, Space Station, not to worry. We've sent you a few important items. They are... International Toys in Space! Here's your host, NASA astronaut Leland Melvin. Hi, I'm Leland Melvin, NASA astronaut. Welcome to International Toys in Space. In the past, you may have seen other NASA programs that highlighted toy experiments conducted on board the space shuttle. This time, we're going totally international, both with the toys that travel into space and with the space station they're going to. The toys have been collected from around the world, with over 40 toys being selected as candidates. In the end, less than half that number were considered good enough to make it through the selection process. Hey, what's that duck doing on stage? Sorry, Rubber Duck. Better luck next time. The toys that made it had a long journey, flying on a space shuttle all the way up to the International Space Station, 250 miles above us. Built by international partners, the station is not only a permanent place to live in space, it's also a space laboratory. But this laboratory is different from any other because of the lack of gravity in space. The space station and all the objects inside it is in a state of free fall around the Earth. Space scientists describe this situation as microgravity. Think of the feeling you have on a swing just at the instant you start to come back down. Now imagine that falling sensation the whole time you're on board the station. But since the station is falling too, things appear to float weightless. Scientists take advantage of the weightless effects of microgravity to study biology, technology, physics, and other scientific disciplines. Microgravity is also the condition in which we conduct our toy experiments. When crews conduct science experiments on the station, the data is sent down to the ground for scientists to analyze. We call these scientists investigators. And that's where you come in. For International Toys in Space, you are the investigators. The Expedition 5 crew has videotaped the toy experiments. Now you analyze the data. OK, investigators, it's time to meet the station crew member who's going to guide you through your toy experiments. Meet Expedition 5 science officer Peggy Whitson. Thanks, Leland. Expedition 5 was a busy mission, and we accomplished a lot. Along with my crewmates, Commander Valeri Korzun and Flight Engineer Sergei Treshov, we performed a six-month mission aboard the International Space Station. As Leland mentioned, there's a lot of science going on at the station. In fact, during our stay, I was named the station's first science officer. We conducted over 20 different experiments. I activated and tested the new microgravity glove box for the station, a place for experiments that need to be kept in an enclosed environment. You should know that for Space Station, even a science officer's job isn't all just science. There was a lot of work to do as a space construction worker, too. I operated the station's robotic arm. Like a giant crane in space, the robot arm helps us install station parts. I also conducted a spacewalk that lasted over four hours. Valeri and I installed micrometeoroid shields on the Zvezda module, the living quarters of the station. And of course, there were the toys. In addition to the experiments you're about to see, we demonstrated some of the toys during a U.S. congressional hearing about space and education. So as you can see, it was a mission full of science and adventure, and the toys were a part of it all. During the video, you'll be hearing my voice give a play-by-play -play of the toy experiments. First, you'll see the toy in Earth's gravity, called 1G. Then you'll see the video of the toy in space, in microgravity. Okay, investigators, good luck. <laughs> 